Hey, what's up? It's uh, Operator Stunner here, and uh, we're gonna do another one of those airsoft talk videos. Uh, Marshall Bennett put one of those up. You know, he's the Operator Blue dude, and I asked him if I could make one, and he said sure. So here I am, because something I you know. I make a lot of videos and I don't put them on you know like I have ones of what I got for my birthday Captain Phillips all that stuff I never put it on just delete it so and most of them are just rambling off but this video is gonna be about a bunch of rambling and other stuff you know because I can and I don't care if you dislike it you know, why would it hurt me? Maybe you just feel proud that you dislike that video. Ah, whatever. I don't care. I don't really look at that stuff anyways. I don't have time to. You know, with the job and stuff. First things first. I'm only 16. People think I'm, like, 35. So if you're like, wow, you're old compared to there's other people on your channel no we're pretty much all the same age maybe like one or two years apart I'm only 16 born September 3rd 1997 for information <laughs> so you know I really don't know what I'm going to talk about but I guess I could talk about, you know, kind of uh, the same stuff as Marshall did in his other video. You know, like, I started from the bottom and now I'm here. Woo! Nah, I did come a pretty long ways in the past five years. Five years it's been probably that I've been, like, officially really, like, you know, Started to know what airsoft was. I've come pretty far ways. And I'm going to just keep going as far as it takes me. Uh, first things first, I haven't put up a video in a while. Because, you know, like usually I'm the one that puts up a lot of the gameplay videos from, uh, well, it's old line tactical now, they changed their thing. I still like opposing force. I don't know. I don't know what's going on down there. I actually I haven't been down there since like I don't know the middle of November was the last time I was down there. And a lot has changed. I guess. I mean, I guess they just got like a whole new inventory of stuff. I mean, there's it's under new management, uh, new staff. I was actually a staff there for a while until I just, man, stuff just got busy. I got busy. I had to be places. I had to be everywhere. So I haven't, I haven't been uh, to Airsoft yet since the middle of November, and I probably won't be back there till like the middle of March. Uh, now, now that's because of work and stuff, which is perfectly fine because it's good to make money. So I can actually play. Makes sense. Um, but other than that, I've just been kind of keeping it on the low side now about airsoft, you know. See where I'm at. Pennsylvania. Fairfield area. It's like right on the border of Maryland and Pennsylvania. Uh, in the school I go to, there's only like Maybe three, four of us in there that really know about airsoft. That's it. I wouldn't even say four. I would say like two. Okay, maybe three. Uh, so, I don't really get to talk about it much in school. And I don't kind of want to because... I know people, society think, oh, guns, they're bad stuff. 
it's good to talk about it. I guess if it's your hobby, you can talk about it all you want. But I just try and talk about other things. You know, I'm trying to get with people. You know, I don't want to. I don't want people to think, man, that guy's weird. Don't be around him. You know. But deep down inside, I can go on for hours. I'm very soft. Oh yeah, just fair warning. This video could be an hour, just like the other one, or a little longer. Probably not longer. Um. So yeah, I mean, so then whenever someone talks to me about airsoft in school, I'm just kind of like, yeah, you always say that thing. You always say that. You always go down there. Just because I don't, you know, I don't want to be thrown out there, and I don't care if I'm made fun of, dude. I got thick skin. As all get out, dude. I mean, I could be made fun of, and I wouldn't care. I wouldn't do anything about it. <laughs> so, they got the freedom of speech. Can't take that away from them. They can say whatever they want to me. I can say whatever I want to them. It's our First Amendment. That's my defense. And it's on their side. So... Anyways, yeah, so I just, you know, trying to stay down low with that, airsoft in school, because not everyone likes it, it's not what the people want, whatever, so I've just kind of turned into a nerd now, uh, since I haven't been able to play airsoft forever, I've just been going back to like the old childhood days, uh, I busted out the Nintendo 64 because my Xbox 360 has been broken for like eight months now and I don't even care to get it fixed. I am not going to pay like 120 bucks to get a new one or fix it or whatever. I don't care. I mean, Xbox Live ran out. The disc reader broke. That's all that broke on it. The disc reader it still works and stuff. I just, I don't feel like it. So, you know, I've gone back to the to uh, Nintendo days, Nintendo 64 is the thing I'm playing a lot now. I busted out my Nintendo 64, GameCube, and Wii console, which is pretty sweet. You know, I'm a huge Zelda fan, so right now I'm trying to find all the Zelda games, and also I busted out like my Game Boy Advance SP because I love Sonic. Sonic Advanced, I have all of them for the Game Boy best games ever created I gotta tell you number two is like the easiest one that was weird oh that's my cat yeah it's, it's pretty creepy being downstairs by yourself Anyways, sorry for that long thing right there, that long, that long pause. It's just weird down here, man. Alright, I should probably turn on the TV, just so I can get some, like, noise floating in here, other than just my voice, because it's just weird. It's probably about one in the morning, maybe. Uh, anyways, okay, so yeah, big Nintendo fan, uh, big Zelda fan, big Sonic fan. So, you know, I've just been getting, like, Majora's Mask. Uh, Skyward Sword, Twilight Princess, uh, Ocarina of Time, Limited Edition, Gold Cartridge, you know, all this stuff is rare to find, and uh, Big Banjo, Kazooie, and Tui fan, I uh, love those games, alright, so anyways, you know, back to like, airsoft stuff, I guess uh, I'll talk about my first airsoft gun, shoot, I don't have it with me, but, uh, well, I if you want to technically say it, my first airsoft gun was one of those really crappy Chinese plastic guns that you can find at a flea market. And I was playing with that thing. I was shooting like my Lego dudes off uh, bionicle tops and stuff. I was like, yeah, dude, this is sweet. Pam. So I broke it. Cocked back in a chunk broke off and I was like, oh no, it broke, 
and then something happened, and yeah, it just didn't work out. And then when I was down in Tennessee, uh, by the Smoky Mountains, and I forget what the town's called, but they had this airsoft shop back in the alleyway. And I went in there, and I was like, whoa, this is so awesome. And it, it was a cool shop, too. You know, they had, like, uh, Lynx, Shield, and Sword. They had all this medieval stuff, all these sweet pull-out flick knives. It was, the cool, it was a cool shop. Um, but, I mean, dude, they had all those guns. And... I just remember like feeling them and just picking them up and it was just so awesome. And back then I didn't know their names, you know, like all the names of the guns and stuff. And this is back in seventh grade. Right now I'm in 11th. <coughs> um, so then my first gun could have been a gas pistol. But I was like, nah, I don't want to spend a hundred of my dollars. I'm going to buy this spring pistol, this Colt 45. So I did 50 bucks spring pistol. $50 for a spring pistol. That's pretty expensive. But it still holds up today. And it is still a good gun. You know, it's a weapon I can hand off to someone at CQB. Or, you know, it's a it's good CQB weapon. Because it shoots good. It's pretty accurate. And, you know, it's just kind of like a last, uh, last resort weapon for me. I mean, now i got a Polar Star and all that other stuff. And mid-cap, and you can just reload it real quick. Slap it in there. Or I got my Tokyo Marui uh, shotgun. Which I might do a review on that sometime. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, um, there's I am, like... Capital I, Capital M, Airsoft. Uh, they have some of my guns that they do reviews on. They're a pretty cool YouTube channel. Uh, they're also on Facebook as well. So anyways, back to my first Airsoft gun. So I got that, and that was awesome. I didn't, fortunately, you know, I didn't get to play with it until I was back at home. And so I played with it and stuff like that, you know. I bought a, a thing of two O's with a, a thousand rounds and you know it just took me forever to blow through it because the clip only held like 12 rounds and all that stuff so but it's a fun gun and then of course I moved on to an to AEG and all that other stuff and I would play in my friend's yard where it was a perfect yard too bunch of trees set up Hey, that he moved. I mean, well, he moved for like a mile away, but he just does not have that yard anymore, which was a great yard. Anyways, I'm just gonna chuck this on here. Um, so other than that, first airsoft gun, it's a good experience. Now I've Got a Navy SEAL loadout with all AOR1 and everything. And a set of night vision goggles. Um, they're Gen 1s. They're ATN Night Cougar XT goggles. And they, they can't go on like a Rhino mount. They come with their own uh, head mount thing. Which I might be able to grab them real quick. Uh, yeah, I think you can see it here. So, yeah, that's them. And then, of course, you know, just go over your head and go over your eyes and stuff. Uh, those were, I got the last, the last in stock ever on their website, the Night Vision guys. It was a Black Friday sale. The head mount was like $200. They threw that in for free because it was part of the offer. Those 
night division goggles were originally 500 knocked down to uh, 300 and it was free shipping so I only paid $300 for that deal so I saved like I don't know about $250 so it's a really good deal or actually no I saved around 450 yeah because it knocked $200 off the goggles yeah, so I saved $450 on that deal. And <laughs> the next time I checked their website, they was completely off the site. Like, they didn't even have the picture or anything. Even when I called them up, because I was like, you know, what if they have these in stock? They said, well, I think we're out of stock. So I got, you know, I got a little nervous. I was like, well, I haven't heard anything, but they said they shipped out the order. So I guess they haven't, unless they're sending me, like, a wrong pair. But nope, it's the pair I ordered. And they are awesome. So, anyways, uh, another thing I wanted to talk about was uh, our Facebook page on Facebook. Judgment Company Airsoft on Facebook. So if you want to go check that out, if you can like our page, that'd be nice. Um, I started up a new page for myself. It's called The All-Arounder. It's where I can basically put whatever I want on there, because I can, and it's all around, you know, from James Bond stuff to Zelda to being crushed by beanbags. I go all around and just do whatever I want. Uh, there's going to be a YouTube channel starting up for that too, so that should be awesome. And I'm teaming up with Sharpshooter3651, she's on YouTube, and we just make pretty pointless videos if we put them up there we don't care what kind of views they get they get like five views and that's it I get I mean that's kind of about it I don't care it's for the fun of it I have fun doing it all right so the next thing I wanted to talk about I'm just kind of copying Marshall but you know trying to think of what to say let me talk about my Eagle Scout project I mean I've always wanted to help people and I, I think that's why I was brought into this world to help people I think that's my ultimate goal in life no matter who you are any race, I don't care what language you speak, young, teenager, old, I've helped them. Being in the Boy Scouts, you know, the Boy Scouts of America, is a pretty life-changing experience, because uh, I, I feel great helping someone out. You know, simply getting something for them. Stuff like that. I mean, I would probably rather volunteer at a job than be paid. You know, like, being a volunteer EMT. That would be one of the greatest things ever to have. That right there would be awesome. Being a volunteer firefighter. Carrying someone out of a built, burning building. Trying to save their house. I would feel really good in my heart. Um, and to know that I've helped someone and I've changed their way and maybe I've changed their thinking or their meaning or I've or they've stepped in beside me and thought the way I thought or I think would really I mean, that, that makes me feel awesome. And just like, you know, so my Eagle Scout project was a 9-11 Memorial Peace Garden. And so I might as well start from the beginning. So there was a senator I met, or 
the father of our church, the priest. Uh, he knew of a senator that goes to our church that's in Maryland. And that senator that was uh, the senator of Maryland a while back ago, uh, Shore, I think is his last name, his nieces work and are the head of the 9-11 memorial. I think, you know, in New York City. Um, that's a pretty big job. That's a job I would like to have. Being the head of a memorial, something so great for so many people. I like that job. Um, so then, I was also able to get into a contact of the priest one of the priests, priests in New York City that um, had connections to the priest that was killed at 9-11 when he was uh, praising the firefighters as they were going in to the building and a piece of the airplane from the towers fell down and hit the priest on, his, on the head and it killed him and two firefighters picked up this priest and laid him down in a church. I forget the name of the church, but so that's pretty big right there. So that priest had connections and he was, you know, telling me about it and all that, um, which was really nice. But So, and then for this 9-11 Memorial Garden, I had many ideas for it, you know, which shape it would go, all that stuff. I'll tell, about, I'll tell you about the final project here a little later, or, you know, once I'm done describing everything. Um, but, originally I was looking for a piece of the tower, you know, like a slab of the concrete, or... A steel beam or any piece of the tower, any of it. Well, they closed down the program that gave out pieces of the tower. They closed down the program. I don't know why. Um, but then there was the nieces, you know, this guy, his name was Ron Vega. And he is the head architecture for the new 9-11 tower, the Freedom Tower. He's the head architecture. And he had this tree uh, that he got from the only surviving white oak tree that was nearby the towers when they fell. And they had that tree now it's in the memorial if you would like to go see it. I got to see it. It was very nice. Uh, so then that tree dropped a lot of acorns. And they all spread throughout the, um, the area, you know. And they planted them. And now if you go to the memorial, all you see is a lot of white oak trees. Which is really nice. So he had this tree. It was the 10th anniversary tree. The egg, he got the acorn on the 10th anniversary day. And he took it home. And he grew it for a year to the 11th anniversary. And he said, well, I have this tree. And I've been looking for a home to give it to. And the pro your project sounds very amazing. And I would love to give you this tree. So, how could I resist getting the 10th anniversary tree? And I'm the only one in the entire nation, probably world, um, to have one of these trees. Uh, especially the 10th anniversary one. Which was, I mean, that was huge. Now I'm on the, I think they said I'm on the timeline 
for the tower uh, place for the 9-11 memorial uh, for this tree so for me to be able to get the tree I had to go to New York City and I had to uh, you know go to the memorial itself all right I was just checking the time there um, so then I got on the train we took a train there me and my family it was October 5th when we went down there because I had off school more days so I took the train down there and then I got down there pretty early and then I met Ron Vega outside of this building and we got well it's always free entrance into the memorial but you know we went through the special line we were treated like kings there like we were VIPs we were very important down there when I say important I mean basically it was a it was a guided tour from the num from the top architecture of the new tower uh, from the Freedom Tower I mean it was a very honorable uh, I just felt honored to be there uh, to be at the memorial and it was probably the mo one of the most nicest things ever uh, if you have not seen this memorial you have to go see it you have to honor all the people we lost that day you have to honor our military and everyone in there so you know I mean we were told everything you know every little piece about this about the water about the, the names of it was a big thing, big. I mean, this was a big day in my life. This changed me forever. Um, it's just so honored to be there. And then, so I, I finally got the tree. And, you know, I, I have certificates of, you know, with my name on there and the the tree, I have two different certificates, you know, stating what the tree is and then the other one saying, you know, this is Anthony's dedicated to the project and all that stuff, uh, which is very nice. And then I got to hear all their, all their survival stories, basically, 9-11, and people that, you know, survivor's guilt, if you've ever heard of that, I heard that a lot down there. And all that other stuff. So, anyways, so then when I went to my, you know, I did my project. Took me the entire summer, and of course I don't do any of the work. I do all the planning. The the Boy Scouts, they do all the work for me. I am a leader in the project. I tell people what to do, where to go, how to do it, and you know what they're supposed to do. So by the time by the time it was done, it was a 24 by 24 area on flat level grassland. Um, with 250 some pavers laid on top all compacted and you know gravel paver sand all that stuff made it look like a top architecture spot right there um, six by six wall surrounding it four uh, six by six wood high except for the back entrance and then in a triangle formation facing out towards the mountains I have three um, 23 foot long flagpoles they go three feet into the ground and they stick 20 feet up of uh, Washington DC which is actually Virginia because the Pentagon's in Virginia because uh, the plane went and hit the Pentagon I have one of course for New York City uh, for the Twin Towers and then I have a third one for Shanksville Pennsylvania so I have the three state flags flying of course they're down now for winter because I don't want them to be destroyed because that would be bad and then off to the left you know where everyone can see it I have the 10th anniversary tree planted in the ground and underneath of the tree I have encapsulated three separate things I have uh, dirt from the Pentagon encapsulated I have dirt from the 9-11 memorial put in a separate different container 
And then I have dirt from Shanksville, Pennsylvania uh, in a different container. That's all in one big uh, PCP pipe underground, underneath the tree. So, uh, probably one of the greatest projects ever done in history of Fairfield. Of course, I was in the newspaper and all that stuff. That was expected. Uh, it was really nice. I was in, because it was in the paper for 9-11, like the actual day. Um, you know, at September 11th, 20th, uh, 2013, Fairfield gets a piece of ground zero. So, that was pretty sweet, uh, that day right there. That changed my life forever. And this whole time when I was boating it, I would just look into the sky and say, wow. I don't know how many people this there are. I don't know how many hearts it is, uh, this is going to touch, but it sure touched mine. And I can definitely tell you that, you know, especially when Zero Dark Thirty came out uh, during that period of time, during the planning process and all that, uh, it just inspired me to do more on the project and all that. You know, big thing. That's probably going to be the longest segment of this video is about my not a little memorial project. And you should listen to this because you're not going to see another one like this. Not with the 10th anniversary tree. You have to go see it. It's on Track Road in Fairfield, Pennsylvania at the church, St. Mary's Church. I have pictures of it, plenty of pictures, probably like over 550. Alright, so anyways, now that I'm done with that, because that, that's the biggest thing right there, I honored everyone in the military, all the families that lost their lives that day, all the people, mm -hmm. not even the mayor, Michael Bloomberg, has a tree, and that's why. The more or New York City did not want to uh, post me in the newspaper for the tree thing because they said that Michael Bloomberg would get angry because a Boy Scout beat him to a tree. Think about that for a little bit. That's pretty sad right there. All right, anyways, next, next, next segment. I'd probably like to talk about is uh, future... Uh, future like business thing you know I, well, I probably won't be able to go into any uh, branch of the military because of my eye disorder oh wow okay right. um, it's juvenile excellent like retinous cases my eye vision is basically at like 8100 and it sucks pretty bad. They probably want to have play or something. I mean, I could see the people move and stuff, you know, but that's all just for fun. Now, if I'm in real combat and I can't see the target, then that's probably not a good thing. So, uh, military, sure we live. But I can still go into business management, which is probably my next backup thing. Uh, business management. The business I want to learn is probably, of course, airsoft. But uh, the style of it, is different. I in my tenth grade or yeah English ten paper magazine thing I came up with this brilliant business idea because these people in Ohio inspired me to do it and stuff, uh, which was it's a pretty cool thing. War dinners so I have to go check them out. Um, the business is kind of goes like this. I think it's, I forget what I called it, Airsoft Tactical Training, where basically I take like new people in the Airsoft or people that just want to come in or people that want to learn tactics and all that, but we go over different stuff each day. Like I'll have a schedule planned out and we'll, you know, learn how to switch your guns uh, to your pistol or how to hold your rifle correctly and all that stuff, you know, how to move correctly with your rifle, all that. Uh, and I would go over that for about half the day. 
And then the other half of the day is a continuous like mini op. Um, of course, I would have to work in like lunch and stuff and all that. But after you learn all your tactics, put them to use. You know, go into this mini op and see how see how well the tactics work for you. You know, see how well stacking up and breaching in works for you. See how well walking while your rifle, you know, while you're holding it like this so that it doesn't bounce up and down. You know, you guys know what I mean. <coughs> and then for the people that, if they don't want to learn that, they could go uh, to the other section where I would have another professional person um, and then they could just play you know for the day like maybe 20 bucks from 10 to 6 maybe have like a small indoors area and a outdoor area kind of combine it where you can go into both so that's that I think it's a great idea just it's small right now but I think it can go big um, other than that first of all you have to have money to make money that's what a business basically has to start out and when, it, when you have a business you always have to have a small part-time job you know something different Something during the week, you go run the business on your week, unless your biz business is successful. Wow. Six, six, six. Successful. And then you could just roll with it. But, anyways, there's so many weird noises down here, I swear to God. Well, I don't like to, but I don't like cussing in my videos either. That's just something I just don't do. I don't find a need for it. So, uh, yeah. Captain Phillips is going to come out on DVD in a little bit. Probably, like, I think at the end of January. I'm going to buy that. And then I'm going to watch it. And then I'm going to probably never watch it again. And then, and then, yeah. But for right now, I'm a big James Bond fan, you know, just the Daniel Craig James Bond, which is the newest dude, uh, Casino Royale, Guantanamo of Solace, and Skyfall, those are the best movies ever. Maybe not ever, but I mean, I was like, dude, they could beat Star Wars maybe before me. I don't know why, dude, I like uh, the Daniel Craig James Bond so much. I'm not sure why. And I completely watched them the wrong way. I watched Skyfall, Guantanamo, and Casino Royal. I watched them backwards. And <laughs> I don't know why. You know. But uh, probably Skyfall was my favorite out of all of them. Because, I mean, that just showed James Bond at, the, you know, at his best. The Casino Royale and Guantanamo Solace was like a lot of shoot 'em up stuff. Uh, Skyfall had a lot of, you know, had some shooting. Also had some fight scenes, which was pretty sweet. It just had all that other stuff, you know. It didn't have like a, it also didn't have a big romance thing. I mean, which is okay. Casino Royale had a big one, like a big romance thing towards the end. And then it got pretty good, and then it was just epic. Um, but it was kind of boring with all the poker game and stuff, but, but that was still kind of intense, though. You know, it was pretty sweet. Go on from the Solace was okay. So, but, yeah, Skyfall for the 50 years. Uh, dude, and then that music, I love that stuff. That music is the best um damn it damn it damn it damn it damn it yeah just it's, it's late 
to just give me some time. And I had work from 3 to 11 tonight. So I'm a little beat up and tired. Uh, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't talked much about Airsoft. This is more like a personal life video. But that's okay. I really don't have much to talk about in the airsoft field. And I don't care about like this whole YouTube thing anymore. I'm just going to maybe post up some videos. I mean, besides, I don't have much to talk about. Uh, I mean, with my first paycheck, I think I'm going to buy myself the uh, um, Heckler, Heckler Notch MP7. Or, yeah, what do, I think that's the one that they have on e-bike. Maybe I'm not sure what I'm what I'm gonna get yet. I think I don't know. I'll see how much money my paycheck is, because mags are like fifty four dollars, and I just I mean I could deal with that, because all I need is like three mags. But I just wanted a chest rig uh, for so long. I had one, but it was an OD, and OD doesn't go too well with AOR one and stuff. Even though I do have a multi-cam uh, top now and car combat shirt, yeah, I have three combat shirts, uh, ACU, multi-cam, and AOR1, which is pretty sweet. I love combat shirts. I have no combat pants. I had combat pants or AOR1, but you make messed up the order and all that is, it's a big mess. So, yeah. And that's some regular shirts. Like I have M81, um, ACU, and uh, Tri Desert. I guess the regular uniform. And like non combat style. The Hurt Locker was a good movie. I forget who that actor was that basically was the main uh, EOD dude. He's a good actor. I think, his name, I think his first name is Jamie. If I'm mistaken. Played in the town as like a good supporting actor with Ben Affleck. Yeah. So anyways, uh, being the leader of PA squads kind of tough. When you have like no one in your PA that wants to go out and play airsoft with you. Because they are losers. Or it's because I just, I'm not sure. I'm about the only one that supports anything. And it's a tough world out there, you know? It's a tough one. Yeah. Well, at least it worked. You get all the free drinks I want. Yeah. Anyways. What else should I talk about? I mean, what can I say? I need to get to more ops. That's what I need to do. I have been to like one. Yeah. Woo, playing airsoft for five years, and you've been to one day op. That lasted from 10 to 4.30. Dude, if you under if you were like in my shoes and understood my life and was with my parents, you would have no time to go anywhere or do anything. It's hectic, okay, in my life. I mean, I struggle even trying to go to play airsoft on a single day. But my dad has assured me, he says, I will get you to another op. Probably going to be Revelations like 5. Or if there's anything close by. Um, I was, you know, going to be at another op. I think it was, I don't know, Airsoft After Dark. I think is what the op was called. But it was just our first attempt at um, Old Line Tactical or Opposing Force Airsoft to play outside at dark from like 7 to midnight which is pretty sweet 
uh, for I didn't have my night vision then, but I got to look through a lot of people's, and that's what uh, inspired me to go buy a pair. My favorite was the PBS sevens; those were the best that I looked through. But other than that, it was an okay thing. I just kind of, I staffed the first three games and I played the last two. The way they set up the lights sucked. The last game I played was our best, was my best game that entire night. The first game was like, you failed miserably. Uh, yeah. P star is the best, especially when you're equipped. I think I'm gonna do a DMR build. Maybe with my first project, I'm gonna get myself a scope. So right now, I got like the tilted red dot, so I can just you know, go like that. This peck box doesn't even work. It's on there for design. Sounds are kind of affects it. Yeah kind of going for like a lone survivor thing but not at all I could buy I could someone selling the gun on the website I think I think it's an H and K 47 416 417 something like that I don't keep up to date with it I don't really I mean if you played yourself with me I mean I don't want to say I'm in it to like look cool, but I'm just kind of in it to not really look cool. I don't even know. <laughs> I I played airsoft for five years. I really don't know how to strip down my gun good. I'm just not that kind of person that takes the time, or I don't have the time to figure out that stuff. You know, I just, I'm just not that person. I don't do that, dude. I'm in a laid back airsoft, you know. I'll get in the gear, I'll go out, I'll learn some tactics. If, you know, I'll shoot people. Jeez, I need to take the time to learn this. But when, when do I ever have the time? I never have the time. I think about it, I was, hmm, I'm seeing things now, anyways, um, I was supposed to do like a 100 subscriber special video, like from JCA, when they first started, like all these video montages put together, till now, I'm so late on it, I haven't even gotten started, I don't have time for anything. Yeah, really. No, no. What was that? Anyways, so probably gonna be selling my ICS M4. I don't know. I kind of like I kind of like the way how it looks. I've only fired it for two and a half hours and it broke. Got a fix. The fire it broke. Now they've assured me it's fixed because they've basically replaced everything inside of it. So I've basically gotten all these free parts for free, which is pretty sweet. I didn't have to play it, pay a single thing. I've probably, I paid 100 bucks for it. They've probably put like over $100 of parts inside. Fine with me. I'll take the free stuff any day. Let's see, Legends of the Skyward Sword. Maybe I should play that. <laughs> not, it's not even open. I'm going to keep it to when it costs like $10,000, like Rejoy's Mask. Yeah, whatever. What else was I supposed to talk about? I had all these things planned out, and I just kind of forgot about it. Um, basically, just... When I get back into Airsoft, I'll be a lot more back into it. Yeah, I mean, what was I supposed to do? Chill out? Or, I mean, that's what I'm doing now. I'll just play some more, some more Super Smash Brothers Melee. I know I've 
really any plans for college or going to stores or anything. Jeez, I think my graduation gift uh, is supposed to be like a freaking cruise, uh, a six-day cruise. I ain't going on no cruise because <laughs> if anything, 2013 or 2012 or yeah, probably 2012, 2013, all I heard about on the news was cruise stuck. These crews are stuck. This crew is stuck. This crew is broken down. 30 people have died on this cruise. Not going to happen to this guy. He just watched 15 minutes of Titanic today. That's a cruise. It didn't end too well. I don't think. I don't even know what I want for my graduation. I don't. Dude. I'm only at 11th grade, second semester. We'll have to start up soon. This is Wednesday. Shoot. I don't really have much to talk about. Probably other than Um, well, I guess I can tell you, if you guys have watched this video to here, thanks. I don't care what you do after that. Just thanks for watching it to here. You know, I'm probably going to keep Operator Stunner. Um, I don't think I'm going to really change that too much. If I do change it, <laughs> it'll probably be like Operator Bond or someone, something like, you know, relevant to James Bond or something. I don't have any other idea. So if you want me to, you can call me Operator Bond or Operator Stunner. You know what? We're going to switch it. We're switching it to Operator Bond until freaking Bond 24 comes out to the, the, the 24th film in the Bond franchise with Daniel Craig. I'll change it then because I've had Stunner since like freaking 2011, I think. I've gotten tired of it. It was, uh, I only got the name because it came out with that movie on National Geographic Channel, uh, uh, SEAL Team 6 to raid on Osama Bin Laden and one of the guys names on there was Stunner and I was like that's a pretty cool name Stunner let me use that we're going to change it to Operator Bond because that just sounds like a cool name so uh leave a comment if you watched that Lone Survivor movie that was good stuff it really, it really got me right where the heart was. Out there at the end. Whenever it showed the pictures of them with their wives. Them. All their teammates. Their buddies. I won't go on it too much. You can check 